like this. Okay, so we're recording. Um, hello everyone, this is the 2nd of October and this is our um, third week of doing the Turing Way online collaboration cafes. It's the first time that um, there are two of us at the Turing Institute who are here in the same room. So we've already had a little bit of a dance of the um, mute and unmute and the feedback. So many apologies to anyone who's watching the recording later and if there's any sort of weird feedback. Um, but really, really excited to have a few folks here. Um, Malvika is going to take part without video and just by typing. So I will verbalize um, her update. So Malvika, if you want to just type like a little kind of hello from yourself and I will, when it comes around to the end, I will um, read out yours. And maybe, uh, Philip, you're unmuted at the moment. So do you want to just uh, introduce yourself and just let folks know who you are? Oh, sure. Yes. Um, I've been hanging out in your Gitter channel for a little while, so I'm starting to get to know people. And I, um, I love the artwork you guys did for reproducibility. It's so cool. And just, um, I think we're doing a lot of similar work. And so I'm very happy to connect. Um, I work at Harvard on a project called Dataverse, which is open source data repository software. And we run it ourselves at Harvard and it's run at 47 other institutions around the world. It's translated into 10 languages. It's in six continents. So um, we're really proud of um, the system and everything's going great. And we're starting to push into reproducibility. Our strength has always been um, getting academic credit for data, getting a DOI to data, being able to bring data to be a um, citable object. But now we have a grant from uh, the Sloan Foundation to integrate with a system called Code Ocean, which is a uh, reproducibility platform. Um, meanwhile, we want to offer a variety of options to Dataverse installations, not just Code Ocean, they should have a choice. So I went to a conference on reproducibility in Chicago back in September of last year and uh, learned all about Wholetail, which is an open source reproducibility platform. Uh, actually, I gave a talk on reproducibility in Dataverse back then that's on YouTube. It's only a five minute lightning talk, so I can link that up in a second and my slides and all that. Um, so that was great. And um, we are now integrated with Wholetail to the point where you can go to a dataset landing page in Dataverse and click uh, an explore button and then Wholetail will download all the files that are in that data set and give you environments in which to um, run computation. So maybe you have a Jupyter notebook or something. I, I gave a talk about this uh, two months ago at our fifth annual community meeting, so I can link that up too. Uh, and then meanwhile, we're integrating with other uh, platforms. Uh, the same gentleman who uh, was, has, works for Wholetail uh, just put up a pull request yesterday to integrate with MyBinder. So MyBinder has recent support for um, more than just GitHub and GitLab. It's now supporting some DOI providers like Zenodo and Figshare. And so now there's a pull request for Dataverse. I'm very excited about that. Uh, I think I've gone on long enough. I'm sorry. <laughs> but no, just that's... a flavor of... of um, I think we're very much working in the same space. I'm aware of the great online book you guys are, are working on, and I'd love to make a pull request. Uh, I'm not exactly sure where data repositories fit into this world uh, of the book, I mean, um, but I'd be happy to, to contribute. That sounds amazing. Yeah, thank you so much. And we'll definitely, I'm super happy to brainstorm where more information about um, Dataverse can, can fit in, that's awesome. Uh, Natalie, do you want to say hi? Yeah, hi. Um, so um, for anyone who doesn't know me, I'm Natalie Thurlby. I'm a data scientist at the University of Bristol. Um, and so my job is like partly uh, research support. So people in any of the faculties at the University of Bristol can ask uh, me and the other data scientists on my team um, for help with uh, statistics, uh, sort of experimental design, machine learning, um, 
and like software engineering stuff um and so like half of my job i guess is helping with that kind of thing and then i also get to do a bit of my own research um so i did my phd in computational biology but um the latest sort of project i've been working on is more kind of meta research um so we basically asked a load of um, scientists and researchers and data scientists to answer the same kind of statistics question with the same data set. Um, and we're kind of analyzing now the kind of range of um, answers that they gave back to that sort of same uh, question. So yeah, that's what I'm working on at the moment. Um, hi. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much. Um, Alicia, go for it. Hello, um, so I'm a new enrichment student here at the Turing. Um, I'm a computational social scientist, I guess, uh, a psychologist by background. And in psychology, there's always been kind of the problem of reproducibility. So I was interested to learn about it from a more data science point of view during the induction week from Kirsty. Um, so I thought I'd show up and see what it's all about. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, we we in the plan for the um, the in, for the new students and the enrichment students who came along, I had them locked in a room from nine forty five until two forty five uh, last Wednesday, and so we did like a lot of stuff about the Turing way, and we actually did some collaborative pull requests, which might be one of the things that I'm going to work on um, today to try and get them merged into the into the Turing way. Um, so thank you so much for being here. Malvika has typed out, um, I'm very happy to see a bigger Zoom call today. I too am very happy. Thank you so much everyone for being here. Um, she's a community outreach coordinator for BioIT Community Project at Embel Heidelberg and proud part-time member of the Turing Way and the Whitaker Lab. So she's working with me and she'll start uh, full-time from about mid-January once she's uh, finished running all of the many, many events that she's running around the world for EMBL um, and currently working on designing a mentoring program in Mozilla Open Leadership uh, Training Program X, so the cohort-based lead training program, um, and happy to involve you as mentors, mentees, or experts. So get in touch with her if, um, if you're interested in having more along those, along those ways, along those, those lines of, of building communities and having training programs. Um, I'm going to real quick share my screen because I want to just pull up the HackMD. Um, so let's flip to the little eye views. If we scroll up to the top, so this is a markdown document, so you can write this way. You can see it both if you click here and you can um, just look at the nice rendered one. At the top here, we use the same link every time, so you can come along and get all of the information that you need. It's currently the 2nd of October at 3 p.m. Um, UK time. And these are some of the useful notes. So this is the, this is the link to the HackMD. So if you need to come back to it, this is the one to hold. You've got the GitHub repository. There's a write-up about collaboration cafes for more information. We've got loads and loads of details in the, contribut in the uh, contributing guidelines. And so that's a link to those. And um, this is our Gitter chat. So the Gitter chat is kind of like, like Slack, except it's totally open. So with Slack, you have to be invited to come along and take part. But with Gitter, you can just swing on by and say hello. Um, our code of conduct, I'm just gonna click on this real quick. So our code of conduct says that we value the participation of every member of our community and we want to ensure that every, every contributor has an enjoyable and fulfilling experience. So everyone is expected to show respect and courtesy to other community members at all times. That includes during these collaboration cafes. Um, we're dedicated to a harassment free experience and we don't tolerate harassment by and or of members of our community in any form. So this code of conduct is taken from uh, some really amazing work that was done by the Carpentries Code of Conduct team. It's got a little bit of information about kind of why we think it's important to have a code of conduct and a little overview, which I've sort of summarized already. We've got some expected behavior here of being respectful of different viewpoints, using welcoming and inclusive language not harassing people, respecting the privacy and safety of others, being considerate of others' participation and not being a bystander. Um, and these sound really easy when they said like that, when I sort of rattled through them, but actually they're <laughs> quite hard to do. And so um, just as a sort of guiding principle to be intentional in um, thinking about our actions and humble it in one way. So it lets us know that uh, without intending to, we've caused any harm. 
and uh, I'm the principal person for you to contact about any of the um, any difficulties in the Turing way, anything that makes you feel um, unwelcome. But there are a couple of other people listed a bit further above. Um, if you have, if you would prefer to report to them rather than rather than chatting with me. Uh, and if you keep on reading all the way down, there's lots and lots of information about unacceptable behaviour and the consequences of some of the reporting guidelines. Um, so that is the code of conduct, and we always follow the code of conduct. Um, we've got our little sign up, so thank you everyone for filling this in already. Um, I had an amazing trip to Edinburgh recently, and so that was why I put, made up this um, your favourite city in the world. And I actually filled this in a few days ago, but I was eating lots of cake at the time, so I just picked the cupcake. Um, I've, I, I've never been to Barcelona, so that sounds amazing. I've never been to Melbourne, I've had this amazing coffee there, so that sounds amazing. I've never been to Strasbourg and I've never been to Bangling. So this list has just sort of like got me started on a whole bunch of places that it turns out that I need to go. The conversation starters um, are just a space for you to promote your event or anything else that you've got going on. So I'm giving a talk about a, um, at a, a about a citizen science project that I'm running um, that I think is going to be a really interesting day. So I pop that up there. MozFest is happening at the end of this month and if you um, have the ability to come to London and hang out for the week of Mozilla's annual festival before it goes around the world, I would love to see you. Um, and Malvika is organising a networking event as well. So if you, anyone on the call, if you have other things that you would like to um, share, please add those in and we can we can come back to it. Pitapalooza, yes, nice. Um, so I'm going to, rather than watching people type, I will just pull up the schedule. So we've done the welcome code of conduct and we've done some introductions. So the next thing is just to have a little think about what we each want to do. The way that the, um, uh, these sort of online collaboration cafes work is that I will put on a 20 minute timer that looks like this and we will not record whilst everybody works. And then we'll have a little break and we'll use the cat timer that looks like this. Is it? Oh, it's just being a bit slow. It's a very cute cat. There you go. So the cat timer will give us those five minute breaks in between. And we'll do three of those 20 minute sort of um, sessions. And then at the end, I'll turn the recording back on and we can just have an open discussion about any of the ideas that's come, that have come out of doing the work. So those are the links to the timers so that I can find them. Um, in Zoom, we have an ability to have little breakout rooms. So if people want to sort of discuss particular topics, then we can make a couple of breakout rooms. There's not that many of us. And so um, it might make more sense to sort of stay in the main room, but I'm gonna stop talking. And does anyone want to unmute, um, or Malvika, you can type and just suggest anything that you would like to work on today? And you can unmute and say, I would like to work on understanding more about the Turing way because I've never done this before. That's like an okay thing and I will, I will happily work with you on that. Um, I'll say what I'm planning on doing because I already know. Um, so I've been working uh, on a chapter about um, uh, text editors and IDs and just kind of like the general environment for you know typing and programming inside so um, I went to a Turing Way book dash a while ago and started that like right at the end of the day um, and so I've been uh, I came to a collaboration cafe last week and I'll probably just keep dropping in until I've sort of done what I was planning on doing Amazing. That's good. No specific Thank you so goal, much. But yeah, but keep, keep chugging. That's awesome. Um, Alicia, do you want to, what would you like to do? Um, uh, pretty much just learn a bit more about the Turing way, learn a bit more about how to uh, contribute using pull requests and just get a feel for how the whole thing works, basically.
<laughs> That's awesome. So I will definitely chat with you about that. Um, Malvika is just typing here on exploring ideas um, on communicating about the Turing Way with new people. So she started a draft of a newsletter, which I have not given any feedback on. Um, and she's like being an absolute superhero going through all of the issues that we have to try and tidy them up and make them a little bit clearer um, on what we can do. Uh, and then, Philip, do you want to unmute and just, I can see you're typing, but I can read that as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can unmute. I was trying to type something, like I said in my intro, that I'm interested in knowing if I were to make a pull request for the book um, that has something to do with, fr from the data repository perspective, uh, I could use some guidance on how to get started with that. Does that make sense? So Yeah, it does. Sorry, I was just fiddling that I couldn't find my unmute button. So, um, <laughs> Um, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen, which I actually thought about. Um, so what I think we should do is Malvika and Natalie, I think you should just mute the room um, and do your work with the, with the 20 minutes and, you know, we'll just sort of, you can put the 20 minutes up on the screen and that's like, if you want to. Um, and then I think maybe Alicia, Philip and I can, we can just sort of stay in this main room and have a little bit of a chat about the Turing Way. And maybe what we'll do is we'll start by talking about um, where in the book some of the information about persistent identifiers or, or um, data repositories already exists and how it might be enhanced. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably just one form of session. And then um, maybe Phil, if you can you can either stay and keep chatting, or you may even want to after the first break. You may even want to just carry on and start adding something. Um, right, and I should mention that um, I'm sort of skipping a meeting for this, and I might want to catch the tail end of that meeting. And I do a stand up in about an hour, or so I, I don't think I can stay for like two hours. That is no problem, and that's a really great moment to just make sure that everyone knows, just anyone who's watching, because I'll put this video up on YouTube later. You are always welcome to join halfway. You're welcome to swing on in, um, and you should definitely go to, your, go to your meeting. So let's stay and have that discussion. Um, Natalie has asked in the chat, does anyone know how to mute the room? I think I would just mute my computer. Does that seem okay? I think the other thing you might be able to do is like totally disconnect the sound, but it feels like muting the computer is probably the easiest thing to do. Um, it might make the coming back from the timings for the breaks okay, but if you don't come, you know, if you don't come back, we'll just let you carry on working and contributing to the Turing way. That's totally, that's totally okay. Uh, great. So I am going to um, pause the recording and I'm going to start the clock. And then um, for Felicia and I can um, can get chatting. And uh, while Vika and Natalie just maybe either unmute yourself and interrupt, or um, just type something in the chat in the chat box if you have any questions. Cool. Okay, here we go. So we're gonna press pause. This is the last like 20 minutes of the Collaboration Cafe and we're back recording again. Um, so we haven't been recording the conversations in the middle. Uh, this, and this is just a space to sort of have bigger questions, talk through things, answer little questions, doesn't really matter what. Does anyone have anything that they would like to start with? Maybe Natalie, do you want to tell us how your IDE chapter is going? Yeah, sure. Um, so I, I did kind of have a few questions, but they're like, they're kind of little questions. I don't know how interesting um, they'll be. It's like, so I've been writing about like different features of IDEs that you might want to like consider whether or not, um, or editors might have. So like, but then I'm thinking like, do these things pop up in other areas of the Turing way? And like, I'm not sure, like, I kind of, I wasn't sure like whether to ask. So like, the stuff like debugging, and I'm sure version control will come up somewhere else, but obviously you can have it integrated. 
um, and like virtual environments probably come up somewhere else and so then I, I just kind of um, and then and like notebooks and like literate programming so I just kind of like I a I don't know how to cross reference to another part of the book because I um, and then B I'm not sh like yeah I'm not sure how much to like I don't want to repeat things if they're already kind of in there so yeah that's but it's been going fine like I've, I've done some stuff put in my little s sort of story I've just been like kind of filling it out um don't think I did that many words <laughs> but yeah that all that all sounds amazing I think the um so I can definitely, I mean, I can show you how to, how to cross, cross reference. Um, it's just a relative, I, it's just a relative link. So I, I could show you, I'll put one, uh, actually, if you, if you add a note to the HackMD or someone adds a note to the HackMD now, I'll, I'll make sure that that's added to the contributing guidelines because that should be, I actually was struggling with making a link when I was like last week and I thought then, that this should be in the contributing guidelines because then I'd be able to just go and look it up. Um, so I, I'll, I'll do that. And then I would definitely say, so, so what I think is the best way forwards is definitely don't, don't write in too much detail on things that you think will, or will like stand alone as their own chapters. So yeah, version control, virtual environment, what was the, you had a third thing. Oh, debugging. Mm -hmm. um, the first two exist already. The debugging one doesn't. Yeah, but I, I think wrote... it should, right? Like that's a really yeah. cool chapter to have, even if it's quite short. And so what I think I would do is mm -hmm. like put in in some way, like a comment, like, I don't know, somehow mark it as a comment in mm -hmm. the text and open the pull request and sort of like, put in questions mm -hmm. for the reviewers. So you could sort of like mark in parentheses or in a quote or in, I don't know, like don't spend too much time formatting it, but like just put in something that says, I think this might want to link to something. Does anyone have any ideas of where it could go? Mm -hmm. um, because I think, I think the review, I think whoever reviews the chapter will have thoughts about that. Um, Rosie, you've written a chapter for the Turing Way. Do you have any thoughts about a good workflow? For, for, for if you've got a chapter that's going to cross, cross a, like end up linking out to a bunch of things, some things which exist already and some things that don't. Looking at, so actually looking at how Jez has been doing it in the credit chapter, I think we put links in where stuff already existed uh but i wouldn't spend too long worrying about that because i think i think we i think we, some of the like uh book sprints we spent a lot of time chatting about should it be here should it be there and like worrying about that and it's not worth the time because we can sort that out later um and then yeah jess has just put comments in sort of to do's and then i guess maybe raise an issue in the repo if they're like chapters that we think we know people can write, I think that's what we were doing was raising issues in the repo and saying this would link into this existing chapter. So, so I, I kind of guessed that there would already be um, version control and I mean, yeah, version control and virtual environments and not debugging. So I like wrote the debugging part as like, well, like very basic start of that. Um, and then I'm just kind of wondering if I like need to like flag that anywhere that it's there. So do you know what I mean? Or so I suppose. Do you think it should be its own separate chapter? Um, I mean, I it's kind of hard because it's it's like I don't think it will be very long because it's just kind of like this is a tool you can use and you can use like a visual one or you can use like a console interactive type one and i think it should be its own chapter okay. <laughs> i realized 
with the last minute of you talking. <laughs> yeah, okay. I don't know how to do debugging. Like I okay. never use things. Okay. <laughs> so the way that I do debugging is I just put print statements everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> so I think what okay. I, so I think then, you should do what Rosie, Rosie said, which is suggest a chapter. Okay. And then, okay. And you, and, you could, if you wanted to, you could copy and paste those paragraphs. Mm -hmm. I mean, you it's not put them in the issue, right? Or like yeah. of, whatever they are. I'll do that. Yeah. Um, and I think what you could do is you could say in that issue that you're going to leave these sentences in the IDE chapter for now because you wrote mm -hmm. them and like it seems it's like difficult to have the flow if you, there's nowhere to like link out to. Mm -hmm. But that if someone comes along and wants to write a few paragraphs about debugging, mm -hmm. go get get those paragraphs and like yeah, do the shuffling around them. The moment, yeah. Okay. I think cool, that yeah. would be a spectacular issue. Mm -hmm. And cool. it's not like a it's quite a concrete first contribution. I wouldn't say it's like a super easy first contribution because it's like writing quite, quite a chunk. But it's the sort of thing that if that issue existed and I was chatting with someone about debugging and they were getting like super passionate about debugging, I'd be like, ooh, you should write. This is this is like the meme, right? This is what Kirsty says all the time. Um, yeah, I think that would be a wonderful workflow. So leave it in, but with a note that when debugging exists as its own chapter, we go get it. Thank you so much for doing that. This sounds amazing. Did you have any other little questions? You said they were like... Um, maybe, let me... Oh, I muted myself. Um, <laughs> let me just look back over here. I think, I think all of the questions were just like, does this already exist? Does this... Right. They're just the same question like 10 times. So yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> just put them in, just, just put them in, like you said, yeah, yeah, and we'll yeah. kind of work yeah. through that in the, in the pull request. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. cool. um, Rosie, how how was your like looking around the repo, <laughs> refreshing yourself? It's fun. There's loads of stuff there that I either knew or I'd forgotten about. So I've added, a, I've got a pull request open to add a couple of lines on why DOIs are a good idea. It's literally like three sentences. Okay. I'm thinking worrying about either putting that in or waiting and adding something on all kids as well because I know it's not. Oh, kids! Okay, this is, yes, I yes. like, yes! I, every time a co author does not have an orchid, I want to link to a thing that says, this is why you should have an orchid. <laughs> and so, yes, I would like that. that would okay, great. so I've left the pull request as WIP at the moment so that at the next cafe I can add another three lines about as well as a DOI, make sure that you've got your all kids so that it all links up and it plays nicely. And where are you putting that in the research data management? No, I put it in a credit chapter. In the credit, perfect. Yeah, I love this it. already mentioned some stuff about how to cite and that felt like it fitted. Do we have any, um, do we know any people who have super common names? Like, do we have any Chinese collaborators that, like, I have two Chinese students at the moment and they, they were like, it's a real problem. Like, it's, a, it's really, really difficult because... I've got someone really working for language. me who's like a B.M. Jones. Yeah, that's pretty, yeah. So yeah. I feel like a little Content quote works. would be kind of cool. Yeah. And, and maybe a couple of examples of, like, what happens if you just search for B.M. Jones. And you're yeah. like, ugh, this person has a very eclectic publishing space because they've published in like all of these different areas versus having an orchid. I would love that. Sorry, I've like jumped all over orchid, but that has been, I'd forgotten that that was something that I desperately wanted in the show. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Right. Well, that's, that's cool because that means I've got something lined up for next time and then I know what I'm doing. That'd be so great. Amazing. Um, Alicia, do you want to maybe summarise a little bit about what we talked about? Um, would you, would you, like, maybe I'll rephrase that. Please, would you mind? <laughs> just as your sort of, or, or maybe just like your point of view on sitting in for the, the last two hours. Um, so what did we talk about? Um, so we talked about 
um, some of the barriers to uh, contributing to the Turing Way um, and why people don't want to do it. And I have kind of not necessarily volunteered, but I will <laughs> um, go out and find why people, PhD students and people who are newer to academia, maybe aren't here with us today. Um, and uh, either try and convince them of the motivations to why this is a good idea or just yeah understand a bit more about why people aren't interested in doing reproducible research or not doing contributing to a um, book about reproducible research and about other aspects of research that should be well known but maybe aren't um, and yeah so we talked about that for a bit and we talked about what it would be useful to know as a PhD as a new PhD student if you were just starting what uh, is useful knowledge that you don't really know that no one really tells you um, but could potentially make your PhD journey less stressful um, not necessarily easier but just less of a concern, less of a worry. Um, and a few of the main ideas that came from that discussion were to do with understanding that the literature is not as truthful as maybe you might think it is when you first enter academia and you think everything's completely objective and anything that anyone's published is 100% truth. Um, whereas it becomes clear after a few years that there is definitely a level of subjectivity within research and it is often a bit hidden and so it takes a little while to kind of navigate and to learn how to read um, to identify maybe possible decisions that people have made without um, without telling you without publicizing that information um, and then we also spoke about risk um, and how, as a PhD student, personally, I think it's good to take risks and to do the riskier research, um, and it's fine to fail because it's not necessarily about getting good results, um, and maybe later on in your career, there is more of a focus on getting significant results, doing significant research, um, but this early on, it's just learning how to do it, about getting to do it and so if it doesn't work it doesn't work. um yeah i think that's approximately what we spoke about yeah thank you so so much for getting over that and thank you so much for coming along so my question for rosie and then i'm not sure i don't have natalie's camera anymore so natalie might pop that. oh you're still here so my question for you because it was a lot of what i was thinking about is all of those not all of it you know a lot of those points that um Alicia and I were talking about today around kind of what do first year PhD students need to know like what would be really useful. The Turing, the Turing way is going to expand out and actually that's what's going on. This is going up, up here. This is a black box algorithm. These are some siloed subjects. These are random seeds. No one can tell. And up at the top are some of the like dimensions that the Turing way is going to expand into. And we were sort of thinking about like if there's a if there's a collection of chapters on how to design your research that might be a good place to include how to read the literature and how to read the literature with care recognizing that there's biases in the literature and then we were thinking about where advice on like support and advice on choosing a project like i suppose the risky project thing would also go in designing your research right like think through the pros and cons of having a big long never been done before project like it's never been done before for a reason or it might have been done and it's just not published because it's not quote unquote significant um so that could go in there some advice on that and then maybe we were trying to think about where like Malvika's advice on building up a network and like finding people who are sort of your peers and can support you would 
What's your gut feeling? Would that go in collaborate it? Would that go in how to collaborate? Like if you went to the Turing Way, where would you intuitively go looking for that knowledge? Yeah, collaborating, I think. It's, but yeah, I don't have a strong feeling, but that's, that would be my first. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, maybe collaborating with a link to from the research design. So depending on how the research design bit's written, if it's written so that um, it isn't just about like the technicalities of designing your research, but the sort of the process and what you're going to go through as a first year PhD student, then that could also link to the collaboration to kind of be like, you know, you're not in a bubble on your own, you need to talk to other people, maybe. Uh, yeah, 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 I like it, I like it. I think what we, what we were sort of thinking about is that the gut feeling is that collaboration, people will think that you're all collaborating on a project and actually peer mentorship is not necessarily that. But the other angle is that by having a networked group of people that you can learn from that and, can, and you can support and they can support you, that's potentially this like much broader kind of view on what is collaboration and what does it mean to be an active collaborating data scientist. So, yeah. I think it's kind of difficult though, because I think the people who really need to know this are the ones who won't think about collaboration, right? The people who, who want to, who are going to be good at this and who are going to get that collaboration is important will probably look there already. So I think it's, that's why I was thinking about prompts in terms of research design and stuff and just really, I think you just need to put it in in several places and just keep pushing people because there are some people who just won't get this. Does that, do you think that makes sense? Yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, yeah, just try and put it in, I guess, as many places as possible. Um, it doesn't seem to fit into one box, but kind of does span almost quite a few. Um, so, yeah. yeah, I think um, the other thing that we were talking about earlier was around um, having content in the Turing way that comes from different angles of what I'm using. Sorry, thanks. Um, and I think I would love to have an, an angle on this from. Um, oh, <laughs> is that any better? Okay. Um, sorry, everyone. The, I would love to have something about this that was from the angle of a supervisor. So, like, if your supervisor said, you should like, you should make sure that you're doing this, this, and this. And so there's a sort of angle around like, you will get the best out of your students if they are not sitting alone, spiraling and having like feeling terrible about themselves. But if they are actually networked up with other people that they're working with. And I feel like that could go, that's then in like a mentorship section. And is, is that collaborate? I think it's collaborating, but I'm, I think this collaborating book is potentially like a kids and taking over the world kind of book. You know, you were talking about the pathways earlier. Is an easy start on the pathways thing checklists for different groups? So you could write a checklist for supervisors that would be like, you know, these are the things for you, these are the things for your students, these are the prompts that you need at different times in a kind of one page away that would. Um, yeah, because they're not going to read the whole thing, right? So one of the things we were trying to do was get them to plug in where they need to. I think I think that makes sense. I think kind of, and I I think where I'm thinking about at the moment is like if we generate the content. So so long as people think that it is like in some way useful, which I think I mean like we've all generally think that it's somewhat useful. If we generate it, then we can sort of learn the pathways as we go. 
and I, I like the check. I think the checklist idea is really good. And I think somebody else, I think it was Ben, had a suggestion about like, if you have two hours, read this, this, and this. If you have four hours, read this, this, and this. If you are this person at this stage of your career, whatever it is, read this, this, and this. And sort of trying to come up with like some of these, like, it might even have been Marvika, actually. Sorry if I'm, I'm misremembering who told me this. It definitely wasn't my idea. These like journeys over time as you go through the content, it could be really fun. Right, folks, I'm so sorry. It's 5.01, so we should finish. The next Turing Way Collaboration Cafe is in two weeks' time. It's in the evening, so it's at 7 p.m. on, um, yikes, can anyone tell me the date um, in two weeks' time? Unmute and just shout it out. 14th? No. No. 14th, 16th. Yeah, it's almost like if you add 14 days to two. Yeah, that's right. So <laughs> thanks everyone. This is a terrible ending, Kirsty. It is the Turing Way Collaboration Cafe it will be on Wednesday, the 16th of October at 7 p.m. UK time, which is really late. Um, and there will also be one, excitingly, at 8 a.m. on Wednesday, the 30th of October. And that is because Paula, who I think is in Queensland, in Australia, is going to be joining for that one. And so that is going to be very, very cool. So that's going to be much more accessible for folks um, in much more easterly time zones to the UK. Uh, so we've got some evening ones for the UK and Europe that will hopefully be accessible for folks in westerly time zones. And then on the 30th, we'll have this, this rather early one uh, if you're in the UK, but much more accessible you are in um, Asia or Australasia. Thank you all so much for coming. These are really, really fun for me. I find them super, super useful for kind of moving the project on and um, learning a little bit more about sort of meditating on what we need to do. So thank you for coming. Really appreciate it. And um, see you soon. Bye. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye.